Hello everybody, this is Cap here, and I would like to welcome you to a brand new series on C++ containers. So of course the first thing we're going to cover here is arrays. Now I know I already covered just a little bit about arrays in my beginner C++ tutorial series. But that was just to give you guys kind of a general idea of how you would use arrays. Uh, in this series I'm going to go a whole lot more in depth and I actually had to split it up into three different videos because on a trial run I originally tried to include them all in the same video and it was over an hour long and I don't want to put you guys through that so I decided to just break it up into three different videos in this video I'm going to go back over you know the array basics which I did in the original and a little bit more and then in the next video I'm going to go into arrays made of structures and objects and arrays of pointers. And in the last one, I'm going to go through passing arrays to functions, dynamic arrays, and multidimensional arrays. So let's get this started here. So I guess you could say the general formula for creating an array is to say your data type, then the name of your array, and then your number of elements. So, for instance, if we wanted to create an array of integers that can that could hold three integers, we would say int for our data type, and we can name it whatever we want. We can just name it num, and let's say we want three elements. Now, what we could do afterwards to fill our array is go through each index whoops <laughs> bum <laughs> sorry about that guys and uh, starting at zero because arrays start at zero and you know we said equal to one then we go two then we go three but a much easier way is to just say that's equal to one two and three So now we can come down here and create a for loop. Say int i equals zero. Well, i is less than three. I plus plus. And c out i and indel. So let's save it and run it. And as you can see, it printed out 1, 2, 3. So we know our array was filled with the integers 1, 2, and 3. So this is mostly how you're going to be accessing your arrays with uh, for loops or for each loops if you wanted to. Because it's really, you know pretty much the best way to do it. You can just cycle through your entire array and most of the time when you make an array it's filled with you know related data that you're going to be doing the same thing with so you're probably just going to run it all through the same for loop and you know multiply it by something subtract something from it or you know something along those lines. So a few different ways that you can make your arrays is you can actually since if you do it this way since it can derive from here how many elements you have you don't actually have to put the number of elements in and you actually don't even have to put the equal sign if you don't want to uh, but I always like to and I always like to put the number of elements Another thing that you'll see a lot of people do, and I personally like to do, is have a constant integer. Name something like max num or number of items or items or something like that. 
and set it equal to the number of elements that are going to be in your array and then use it here so that then whenever you use it in a for loop or pass it into you know a function which we're going to see in later videos you can just pass in max num that way if for some reason you know you have to add more elements or anything like that you won't have to go through everywhere where you use the length of your array and change it you can just change this constant and also you want to use less than not less than or equal to in your for loops because if you do less than or equal to since arrays start at zero it's going to go zero one two and it's going to go all the way to three which is one past where our array goes so you're going to get like some random a number like that and we don't want that so be sure that you use less than and not less than equal to just kind of wanted to make that pretty clear so how you access your arrays is through the index like you know I've, I've been doing but I just kind of wanted to make it perfectly clear that that's what's happening we're accessing it through the index so it start the index starts at zero and then goes to you know however many elements are in your array so zero one two not one two three it's zero one two so the next thing I want to go over here is how arrays are stored in your memory so arrays are stored in contiguous memory meaning that they're all grouped together all of the elements are grouped in one block so our array would be like this we have position 0 1 and 2 we have 1 2 3 and I'll actually show you guys this in memory using a pretty nifty a Visual Studio's tool here so this allows us to see certain spots in memory and what's stored in them it's all in hexadecimal which is okay and most stuff is when you're talking about computers it's easier than binary so thankful for that uh, F9, and I'm getting the address from local from a local window over here which you can you know put in your debugger by going up to debugger then you know choosing windows and picking you know your memory and your locals and whatever else you want I even have disassembly open over here because I know a little assembly and it can be very helpful when troubleshooting or troubleshooting wow uh, debugging sorry I've, I've been you know doing computer troubleshooting the last few days so anyways, let's go through this. And what it's going to do is since our array is of integers and we have three of them and each, and as I said, this is hexadecimal, each uh, group of two here is a byte. So each row is going to be four bytes, which would be the equivalent of an integer. So what it's going to do is it's going to allocate these three spaces here for our array because this is all contiguous here all this is one big block of memory so let's step through it here and there you go as you can see it allocated these three rows here and it put one two and three in there now really we should use a short if we know that they're going to be this you know that the numbers are going to be this small because look at all this wasted space here which you know in in today's with today's computers isn't really that much but you should always try to be as efficient as you can I suppose and that's pretty much what I wanted to cover I wanted to 
I'm going to show you guys how it was in memory. I'm going to show you how to make an array, how to go through an array, how to access array, and all that stuff. So, once again, I would like to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. And <clears throat> I will see you guys in the next video.